Question 1. What is the primary reason for food handlers to wash their hands? A. To remove visible dirt. B. To cool down. C. To reduce the risk of foodborne illness. D. To comply with regulations. Answer. C. To reduce the risk of foodborne illness. Proper hand washing is crucial in preventing the spread of pathogens that cause foodborne illnesses. Question 2. What are the critical temperatures for hot holding and cold holding of food? A. Hot above 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, and cold below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius. B. Hot above 125 degree Fahrenheit, 52 degree Celsius, and cold below 45 degree Fahrenheit, 7 degree Celsius. C. Hot above 140 degree Fahrenheit, 60 degree Celsius, and cold below 35 degree Fahrenheit, 2 degree Celsius. D. Hot above 150 degree Fahrenheit, 65 degree Celsius, and cold below 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. Answer A. Hot above 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, and cold below 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius. These temperatures prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 3. How can cross-contamination be prevented in the kitchen? A. By using the same cutting board for all types of food. B. By cooking all foods to the same temperature. C. By keeping raw and cooked foods separate. D. By only washing hands once a day. Answer. C. By keeping raw and cooked foods separate. This prevents the transfer of harmful bacteria from raw to cooked foods. Question 4. What is the correct way to use and store a food thermometer? A. Store in a warm place and use without calibration. B. Calibrate regularly and store in a clean, dry place. C. Only use for meats and store with kitchen utensils. D. Use for checking room temperature and store in the refrigerator. Answer. B. Calibrate regularly and store in a clean, dry place. Proper use and storage ensure accurate temperature readings. Question 5. Why is it important to cook foods to their proper temperatures? A. To enhance flavor. B. To improve texture. C. To kill harmful bacteria. D. To reduce cooking time. Answer. C. To kill harmful bacteria. Proper cooking temperatures ensure food safety by eliminating pathogens. Question 6. How should ready-to-eat foods be handled to avoid contamination? A. With bare hands for better grip. B. With gloves or utensils to minimize direct contact. C. Only after handling raw food. D. Without any special precautions. Answer. B. With gloves or utensils to minimize direct contact. This reduces the risk of contamination from hands. Question 7. What are the key symptoms of foodborne illness that food handlers should be aware of? A. Hunger and thirst. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. C. Dizziness and headache. D. Increased appetite. Answer. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. These are common symptoms of foodborne illnesses. Question 8. What are the most common allergens that food handlers should know? A. Salt, sugar, water, and flour. B. Milk, eggs, fish, and shellfish. C. Chocolate, tomatoes, beef, and pork. D. Rice, beans, potatoes, and corn. Answer. B. Milk, eggs, fish, and shellfish. These are among the major allergens identified by regulatory authorities. Question 9. What steps should be taken if a food handler is sick? A. Continue working but avoid handling food. B. Take medication and work as usual. C. Report the illness to the supervisor and stay away from the kitchen. D. 
D. Work only with non-perishable foods. Answer. C. Report the illness to the supervisor and stay away from the kitchen. This prevents the spread of illness. Question 10. Why is it important to store raw and ready-to-eat foods separately? A. To save space in the kitchen. B. To prevent cross-contamination. C. To make inventory easier. D. Raw foods require cooler storage. Answer. B. To prevent cross-contamination. This practice prevents harmful bacteria in raw foods from contaminating ready-to-eat foods. Question 11. What are the basic steps for cleaning and sanitizing equipment and surfaces? A. Wiping with a dry cloth and then using. B. Rinsing with water only. C. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying sanitizer. D. Ignoring unless visibly dirty. Answer. C. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying sanitizer. This process ensures surfaces and equipment are safe for food contact. Question 12. How frequently should food contact surfaces be cleaned and sanitized? A. Once a day. B. Only when visibly dirty. C. After each use. D. Once a week. Answer. C. After each use, regular cleaning and sanitizing prevent the buildup of bacteria. Question 13. What is the proper procedure for washing hands in a food service environment? A. Quick rinse under running water. B. Use sanitizer only. C. Wash with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. D. Wipe hands on a cloth towel. Answer. C. Wash with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Proper hand washing is crucial in preventing contamination. Question 14. Why is personal hygiene critical in food handling? A. It's a good professional habit. B. It prevents the transfer of bacteria and viruses to food. C. It keeps the uniform clean. D. It's only important for chefs. Answer. B. It prevents the transfer of bacteria and viruses to food. Good personal hygiene is essential for food safety. Question 15. What is the danger zone temperature range for food? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit, minus 18 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 100 degree Fahrenheit to 150 degree Fahrenheit, 38 degree Celsius to 65 degree Celsius. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. D. 140 degree Fahrenheit to 180 degree Fahrenheit, 60 degree Celsius to 82 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degrees Celsius to 57 degrees Celsius. This range is where bacteria grow rapidly and can cause foodborne illnesses. Question 16. What is the significance of using time temperature indicators, TTIs? A. They indicate the best time to serve food. B. They show how long food can be stored. C. They monitor time and temperature exposure of food. D. They are used for cooking only. Answer. C. They monitor time and temperature exposure of food. TTS help ensure food safety by indicating if food has been held in the danger zone. Question 17. How should chemicals be stored in a kitchen? A. Alongside food for easy access. B. In clearly labeled separate areas away from food. C. Without labels to prevent confusion. D. In the refrigerator to maintain effectiveness. Answer. B. In clearly labeled separate areas away from food, proper storage prevents chemical contamination of food. Question 18. What are the guidelines for thawing frozen food safely? A. At room temperature. B. Under cold running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. 
C. In hot water. D. On the kitchen counter overnight. Answer. B. Under cold running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. These methods prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 19. What is a foodborne pathogen? A. A special nutrient in food. B. A beneficial bacterium. C. A microorganism that can cause illness. D. A type of food additive. Answer. C. A microorganism that can cause illness. Pathogens in food can lead to foodborne illnesses. Question 20. What should be done if a food contact surface is contaminated? A. Ignore until the end of the shift. B. Clean and sanitize immediately. C. Cover it with a cloth. D. Only rinse with water. Answer. B. Clean and sanitize immediately. Prompt action prevents the spread of contamination. Question 21. How should food handlers deal with cuts or wounds? A. Continue working as usual. B. Cover the wound with a bandage and wear gloves. C. Leave the wound open to air out. D. Use a paper towel to cover the wound. Answer. B. Cover the wound with a bandage and wear gloves. This prevents any potential contamination from the wound to the food. Question 22. What is the correct procedure for manual dishwashing? A. Wash with cold water only. B. Soak in water, then air dry. C. Wash, rinse, and then sanitize. D. Wipe with a cloth and reuse. Answer. C. Wash, rinse, and then sanitize. This three-step process ensures dishes are properly cleaned and sanitized. Question 23. How can pest infestations in a food service area be prevented? A. By keeping doors and windows open. B. Regular cleaning and proper waste disposal. C. Ignoring small pests as they are harmless. D. Using only chemical pesticides. Answer. B. Regular cleaning and proper waste disposal. Good sanitation practices are key in preventing pest infestations. Question 24. What are the rules for reheating food? A. Reheat to any temperature as long as it's warm. B. Reheat to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds within 2 hours. C. Reheat in a microwave only. D. Reheat only once and discard leftovers. Answer. B. Reheat to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds within 2 hours. This ensures the elimination of harmful bacteria. Question 25. How should you handle a customer complaint about food safety? A. Ignore the complaint. B. Listen carefully, apologize, and report it to a supervisor. C. Blame the customer. D. Offer a discount and move on. Answer. B. Listen carefully, apologize, and report it to a supervisor. Addressing complaints properly can help identify and rectify food safety issues. Question 26. What is the importance of date marking in food storage? A. To make the fridge look organized. B. To monitor and control inventory. C. Only for aesthetic purposes. D. It has no real importance. Answer. B. To monitor and control inventory. Date marking helps ensure proper stock rotation and prevents the use of expired items. Question 27. How should you maintain food safety during transportation? A. Transport at any temperature. B. Maintain food at safe temperatures and in clean containers. C. Use open containers for ventilation. D. Store food next to chemicals for easy transport. Answer. B. Maintain food at safe temperatures and in clean containers. This prevents contamination and temperature abuse. 
Question 28. What are the signs of rodent or insect infestation in a kitchen? A. Fresh paint on walls. B. Droppings, nesting materials, and damage to food packages. C. Clean floors. D. Well-stocked pantry. Answer. B. Droppings, nesting materials, and damage to food packages. These are common indicators of pest infestations. Question 29. What is the proper disposal method for expired food? A. Donate to food banks. B. Securely bag and dispose of in a designated waste area. C. Relabel and use immediately. D. Serve to staff only. Answer. B. Securely bag and dispose of in a designated waste area. Expired food should be discarded properly to prevent accidental use. Question 30. What are the guidelines for serving food to high-risk populations like the elderly or immunocompromised? A. Serve leftovers only. B. No specific guidelines needed. C. Follow stricter food safety controls and temperature guidelines. D. Serve raw foods for natural enzymes. Answer. C. Follow stricter food safety controls and temperature guidelines. High-risk groups require extra precautions to prevent foodborne illnesses. Question 31. How should you manage leftovers in a food service operation? A. Discard all leftovers. B. Cool rapidly, label, and store properly. C. Leave at room temperature for reuse. D. Use leftovers for staff meals only. Answer. B. Cool rapidly, label, and store properly. This ensures leftovers are safe for future use. Question 32. What is the proper way to store dry goods? A. In a warm, damp area. B. On the floor near the door. C. In airy containers in a cool, dry area. D. Uncovered for easy access. Answer. C. In aerated containers in a cool, dry area. Proper storage prevents contamination and spoilage. Question 33. How should you handle a food recall? A. Continue using the recalled item until finished. B. Remove the item from inventory and follow instructions for disposal or return. C. Ignore the recall notices. D. Use the recalled item for personal use only. Answer. B. Remove the item from inventory and follow instructions for disposal or return. Prompt action is needed for safety. Question 34. What are the best practices for using a microwave for cooking food? A. Cook foods on the highest setting. B. Stir and rotate food for even cooking. C. Use it for reheating only. D. Microwave food in metal containers. Answer. B. Stir and rotate food for even cooking. This ensures food is cooked evenly throughout. Question 35. What are the symptoms of chemical contamination in food? A. Unusual taste, odor, or color. B. Increased appetite. C. A feeling of fullness. D. Craving for sweets. Answer. A. Unusual taste odor, or color. These symptoms can indicate chemical contamination. Question 36. What are the guidelines for washing fruits and vegetables? A. Rinse with hot water only. B. Wash thoroughly under running water. C. Use soap and water. D. Washing is not necessary. Answer. B. Wash thoroughly under running water. This removes dirt and potential contaminants. Question 37. How should you store utensils when not in use? A. In a sink full of water. B. On the floor for easy access. C. In a clean, dry location. D. On a dirty dish pile. Answer. C. In a clean, dry location. Proper storage prevents contamination. Question 38. How often should you check the sanitizing solution concentration? 
A. Once a month. B. At the beginning of each shift. C. Once a year during inspection. D. Never, as it remains constant. Answer. B. At the beginning of each shift, regular checks ensure the solution is effective. Question 39. How do you handle a choking incident in a food service area? A. Ignore and continue working. B. Immediately call emergency services. C. Offer water to the person choking. D. Laugh and take a video. Answer. B. Immediately call emergency services. Prompt action can be life-saving in choking incidents. Question 40. What are the guidelines for serving food on buffets? A. Leave food out all day. B. Use sneeze guards and keep foods at correct temperatures. C. Allow customers to use their hands. D. Mix old and new batches of food. Answer. B. Use sneeze guards and keep foods at correct temperatures. These practices ensure food safety on buffets. Question 41. What is the proper way to handle a knife in the kitchen? A. With the blade facing other staff. B. By the blade while passing it to someone else. C. By keeping the sharp edge pointed away and carrying it with the blade down. D. Running with the knife for efficiency. Answer. C. By keeping the sharp edge pointed away and carrying it with the blade down. This ensures safety in handling knives. Question 42. How should you deal with a power outage in a food service operation? A. Continue as usual. B. Discard all food immediately. C. Monitor temperatures and use alternative methods for keeping food safe. D. Take a break until power is back. Answer. C. Monitor temperatures and use alternative methods for keeping food safe. It's important to ensure food safety during power outages. Question 43. What is the role of a food safety supervisor? A. To cook food. B. To supervise only the dining area. C. To oversee and maintain food safety standards in the establishment. D. To handle customer complaints. Answer. C. To oversee and maintain food safety standards in the establishment. The supervisor ensures compliance with food safety protocols. Question 44. What should you do with leftover food that has been sitting out? A. Serve it to staff. B. Discard it if it has been out beyond recommended time limits. C. Store it for later use. D. Reheat and serve to customers. Answer. B. Discard it if it has been out beyond recommended time limits. This prevents the risk of foodborne illness. Question 45. How should you handle ice in a food service environment? A. With bare hands for convenience. B. Using a scoop and storing ice in a clean, sanitary container. C. Reusing leftover ice for drinks. D. Keeping the ice bin open at all times. Answer. B. Using a scoop and storing ice in a clean, sanitary container. Proper handling is essential to prevent contamination. Question 46. How can cross-contact of allergens be prevented? A. By cooking foods at high temperatures. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic foods. C. Serving only allergen-free foods. D. Ignoring customer allergies. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic foods. This helps in preventing cross-contact of allergens. Question 47. What factors contribute to food spoilage? A. Cooking food properly. B. Time, temperature, light, and microbial growth. C. Freezing food. D. Using preservatives. Answer. B. Time, temperature, light, and microbial growth. These factors can accelerate food spoilage. Question 48. 
What is the proper way to cool large quantities of food? A. Leave it at room temperature overnight. B. In large containers in the refrigerator. C. Divide into smaller portions and cool rapidly in a chiller. D. By placing it in the freezer immediately. Answer. C. Divide into smaller portions and cool rapidly in a chiller. This method ensures rapid and safe cooling. Question 49. How should food handlers manage personal protective equipment, PPE, during a shift? A. Share PPE with other staff. B. Wear the same gloves for all tasks. C. Use and dispose of PPE appropriately, changing as needed. D. Reuse PPE to save costs. Answer. C. Use and dispose of PPE appropriately, changing as needed. Proper management prevents cross-contamination. Question 50. What are the guidelines for disposing of grease and oil? A. Pour down the sink. B. Dispose of in designated containers. C. Dump in the garbage. D. Reuse for different recipes. Answer. B. Dispose of in designated containers. Proper disposal prevents plumbing issues and environmental hazards. Question 51. How do you maintain a food allergen awareness in the kitchen? A. Ignore it unless a customer asks. B. Regular training and clear labeling of allergenic ingredients. C. Only focus on gluten. D. Use allergens in every dish. Answer. B. Regular training and clear labeling of allergenic ingredients. Awareness is key to preventing allergic reactions. Question 52. What are the rules for serving food to children in a food service setting? A. Serve food at adult-sized portions. B. Follow special safety guidelines, like cutting foods into small pieces. C. Let children serve themselves. D. Offer only spicy food. Answer. B. Follow special safety guidelines, like cutting foods into small pieces. This prevents choking hazards. Question 53. How do you properly store a mop and cleaning supplies? A. In the food preparation area. B. In a clean, dry, and designated storage area. C. On the kitchen floor for easy access. D. Along with food items. Answer. B. In a clean, dry, and designated storage area. Proper storage prevents contamination. Question 54. What are the guidelines for the safe use of cutting boards? A. Use the same board for meat and vegetables. B. Regular cleaning and using different boards for raw meats and other foods. C. Never wash cutting boards. D. Store dirty cutting boards with clean utensils. Answer. B. Regular cleaning and using different boards for raw meats and other foods. This practice prevents cross-contamination. Question 55. How should you handle a foodborne illness outbreak in your facility? A. Hide the information. B. Investigate, document, and report to the relevant authorities. C. Blame the customers. D. Offer discounts to affected customers. Answer. B. Investigate, document, and report to the relevant authorities. Prompt and appropriate actions are crucial. Question 56. What are the key points of a food safety inspection? A. Food temperature, employee hygiene, and kitchen cleanliness. B. Speed of service. C. Taste of the food. D. The decor of the establishment. Answer. A. Food temperature, employee hygiene, and kitchen cleanliness. These are critical aspects assessed during inspections. Question 57. What is the importance of personal grooming in food safety? A. It has no impact on food safety. B. Good grooming prevents contamination of food. C. It's only important for front-of-house staff. D. It's about looking professional only. Answer. B. 
Good grooming prevents contamination of food. Personal cleanliness is a key part of food safety. Question 58. What are the best practices for monitoring and maintaining food temperatures on a buffet? A. Check temperatures every hour and keep foods covered. B. Serve cold foods only. C. Ignore temperatures as food is consumed quickly. D. Use the single thermometer for all items. Answer. A. Check temperatures every hour and keep foods covered. Regular monitoring ensures food remains safe to eat. Question 59. How should you clean and sanitize a meat slicer? A. Wipe with a cloth after each use. B. Clean and sanitize every four hours of use. C. Never clean as it's self-cleaning. D. Clean once at the end of the day. Answer. B. Clean and sanitize every four hours of use. Regular cleaning prevents contamination. Question 60. What steps should be taken to sanitize hands if soap and water are not available? A. Wipe on a cloth. B. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. C. Ignore and continue working. D. Rinse with water only. Answer. B. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. This is an effective alternative when soap and water are not available. Question 61. What are the specific food safety challenges in a mobile food truck, and how are they addressed? A. Limited space and maintaining proper temperature control, addressed by regular monitoring. B. No challenges as food trucks are exempt from food safety rules. C. Only serve pre-packaged food. D. Use disposable utensils only. Answer. A. Limited space and maintaining proper temperature control, addressed by regular monitoring. Mobile food trucks must manage space efficiently and keep strict temperature controls. Question 62. What are the guidelines for safely reheating chilled food to ensure safety? A. Reheat to room temperature. B. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, for 15 seconds. C. Reheat quickly in a microwave. D. It should not be reheated. Answer. B. Reheat to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, for 15 seconds. This temperature ensures that any potential bacteria are killed. Question 63. What are the best practices for food safety during outdoor events? A. No need for precautions. B. Keep cold foods cold and hot foods hot and protect from contaminants. C. Serve only dry foods. D. Use only canned food. Answer. B. Keep cold foods cold and hot foods hot and protect from contaminants. Maintaining proper temperatures and covering foods are key. Question 64. What is the importance of employee training in food safety? A. It's not necessary. B. To comply with regulations. C. Ensure staff are knowledgeable and can prevent foodborne illnesses. D. Only for new employees. Answer. C. Ensure staff are knowledgeable and can prevent foodborne illnesses. Training is crucial for maintaining a safe food service environment. Question 65. What are the guidelines for washing table linens and aprons? A. Wash with food items. B. Use strong chemicals only. C. Regularly and as needed, separate from food items. D. Replace instead of washing. Answer. C. Regularly and as needed, separate from food items. Proper laundering prevents cross-contamination. Question 66. How can you ensure the safety of food during a power failure? A. Leave the food as it is. B. Use a generator or keep refrigerators and freezers closed. C. Discard all food immediately. D. Cook all food immediately. Answer. B. Use a generator or keep refrigerators and freezers closed. 
This helps maintain safe temperatures. Question 67. What are the best practices for using a food processor in the kitchen? A. Use for all types of food. B. Clean and sanitize between uses, especially when switching between raw and cooked foods. C. Never clean it. D. Only use it for chopping vegetables. Answer. B. Clean and sanitize between uses, especially when switching between raw and cooked foods. This prevents cross-contamination. Question 68. How should you respond to a health inspection finding? A. Argue with the inspector. B. Ignore the report. C. Take corrective action as required and document changes. D. Close the establishment. Answer. C. Take corrective action as required and document changes. Addressing issues promptly is key to compliance and safety. Question 69. How should chemicals and cleaning agents be labeled and stored in a food service area? A. In unmarked containers for convenience. B. Alongside food items. C. Clearly labeled and stored away from food. D. In the same container as food for space saving. Answer. C. Clearly labeled and stored away from food. Proper labeling and storage prevent accidental contamination. Question 70. What is the correct method for drying hands after washing in a food handling environment? A. Air dry or use a single-use towel. B. Wipe on apron. C. Shake hands in the air. D. Use a communal cloth towel. Answer. A. Air dry or use a single-use towel. This prevents recontamination of clean hands. Question 71. How should perishable food items be rotated in storage to maintain freshness and safety? A. First in, first out, FIFO. B. Last in, first out, LIFO. C. Randomly. D. Based on size. Answer. A. First in, first out, FIFO. This method ensures older stock is used first, reducing waste and maintaining freshness. Question 72. What actions should be taken if a food handler observes another employee violating food safety practices? A. Join them. B. Report to a supervisor or manager immediately. C. Ignore, as it's not their responsibility. D. Take over their task. Answer. B. Report to a supervisor or manager immediately. Reporting is vital to maintain food safety standards. Question 73. What is the correct method for disposing of food waste in a kitchen? A. In the sink. B. In a designated waste container. C. On the floor. D. Outside the back door. Answer. B. In a designated waste container. Proper disposal prevents pests and maintains hygiene. Question 74. How should temperature logs be maintained and monitored in a commercial kitchen? A. Only when remembered. B. Regularly and accurately to track temperatures of food storage units. C. Once a week. D. Not necessary. Answer. B. Regularly and accurately to track temperatures of food storage units. This ensures compliance and food safety. Question 75. What are the guidelines for safe ice handling and storage in a food service environment? A. Handled with bare hands. B. Using clean, dedicated scoops and storing ice away from contaminants. C. Stored at room temperature. D. Treated as non-food item. Answer. B. Using clean, dedicated scoops and storing ice away from contaminants. Proper handling prevents contamination. Question 76. How can technology enhance food safety in a kitchen? A. By replacing all staff with robots. B. Through digital temperature monitoring and food safety management systems. C. Technology has no place in kitchens. D. 
using smartphones only? Answer, B, through digital temperature monitoring and food safety management systems. Technology aids in precise control and monitoring. Question 77. What are the considerations for food safety in relation to food presentation and garnishing? A. Style over safety. B. Ensuring garnishes are safe and edible, and food is presented at safe temperatures. C. Using indible garnishes for visual appeal. D. Only focus on the taste. Answer. B. Ensuring garnishes are safe and edible, and food is presented at safe temperatures. Safety should never be compromised for style. Question 78. How should a manager address language barriers in food safety training? A. By only training in English. B. Offering multilingual training materials and using visual aids. C. Not training non-English speakers. D. Using only verbal instructions. Answer. B. Offering multilingual training materials and using visual aids. This ensures understanding regardless of language barriers. Question 79. What is the proper procedure for calibrating a food thermometer? A. Guessing its accuracy. B. Using boiling or ice water to adjust the thermometer to the correct temperature. C. Never calibrate. D. Calibration is not necessary. Answer. B. Using boiling or ice water to adjust the thermometer to the correct temperature. Regular calibration ensures accuracy. Question 80. How should a food service operation handle customer feedback or complaints related to food safety? A. Disregard as irrelevant. B. Take seriously, investigate, and take appropriate action. C. Argue with the customer. D. Offer a discount and forget. Answer. B. Take seriously, investigate, and take appropriate action. Feedback is vital for continuous improvement and addressing potential issues.